Uh, what's happening guys? If you're new here, my name is Nick Che. <coughs> that really wasn't planned, but I just choked on my cough drop. So yeah, it's been a little while since I've been in front of the camera just talking to you guys, but today I thought I'd answer a question and give you guys some advice on something that I had a lot of trouble with and I know that a lot of you guys may have questions and concerns about and that's how to get your first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Coming from personal experience, I know that hitting that 1,000 mark was such a huge milestone for me. It literally felt like I had accomplished so much of what I've been working for, but I also know how hard and frustrating it can be to put out great content and not have anyone see it and not get that subscriber count that you're looking for and been working for for so long. To be honest, if you guys were here before, let's say I was hitting 500 subscribers, you know, that quality of content was still as great, if not better than the stuff I'm putting out today to be honest. So if you go back and look at my vlogs in the summer, I had so much more time that I was putting into developing my craft and really making sure that this vlogging thing was right for me. And it turns out it was, and I'm having a lot of fun doing it now, but I can completely understand and relate if you guys aren't satisfied with where your subscribers are. And so today I thought I'd give you guys my insights and perspectives on what I think it takes to hit your first 1,000 subscribers. All right, so first and most importantly is you have to have a passion for whatever content it is you're creating. Whether it's photography, film, fashion, beauty, lifestyle, anything like that, the first and most important thing is that you have to have a genuine passion for it. This is an art form or a hobby or a talent that you have that you think about every single day, every hour you're awake, all you can think about is, I wanna be taking photos, I wanna be taking videos, I just wanna be creating content if that's the point that you are at right now then that's perfect you already have the right fundamentals set up for you to be successful why I say that passion is the most important aspect of growing any type of YouTube channel is that it's the most apparent your audience and your fans and your subscribers can easily see right through BS and can tell when a person's not being genuine or isn't really being authentic to something that they're passionate about but if you see someone who really enjoys making these videos and is having a great time and putting out content you know not for any other reason just besides the fact that they love it then that's someone that you're gonna look up to, want to subscribe. And at the end of the day, that's how you build a meaningful relationship with your audience because they felt that connection with you and now you're providing that same relationship back to them. You know, to be honest, the YouTube field is very saturated with so many vloggers and so many people trying to make it in this industry right now. I remember starting this whole thing, just looking up to people like, obviously like Casey Neistat, who, you know, started this whole trend and is now one of the greatest creators on this platform and someone who I look up to every single day. But I took a lot of advice from his videos and his motto of like, work harder or just make content every single day like I really took those to heart and it finally paid off for me but I truly believe and I can tell you from personal experience that if you believe in yourself and believe in the work that you're putting out it's gonna pay off it might not be right now it might not be in a few months it might be years but eventually someone will take notice and that one person will eventually turn into hundreds and thousands and eventually millions I mean obviously that's huge crazy dreams to have but to be honest like if you don't have dreams, then what are you working for? That's the mentality to have, like, because there's nothing worse than setting standards low for yourself and, you know, not realizing your full potential. Does that kind of make sense? I think the biggest reason I see so many people burn out on YouTube is that they're in it for the wrong reasons. They're in this for the fame and the fortune and the money. And sure, as great as that all sounds, that should be a second priority. Eventually that will come and that can come if you do this right, if you follow the steps properly and if you you know get to the point where yeah you can make a decent living off of this or you can make some good side money and you have you know thousands of subscribers that can look up to you and you have an audience to share your platform with. Of course that's great and that's something to work towards but that shouldn't be the main priority. The main priority should always be putting your content out there first and you know I just keep emphasizing like do something that you're passionate about and just Work at that every single day until you master it and then learn new skills and move on and just keep growing. It's gonna be extremely hard. There are gonna be so many days where you wanna give up, when there's gonna be trolls commenting some mean stuff on your videos or people are disliking them. I ha used to have these trolls who would literally dislike every single one of my videos. It would like, I don't know who these kids are, but all my videos would have more dislikes than likes in my first videos. But now I'm getting like 200 likes per video with two dislikes, so I'm like, screw you haters. And to be honest, that's the mentality you have to have. Put your head down, plow through the work, and one day when you're making it big, that's just a huge middle finger to all the people who ever doubted you. All right, tip number two is you have to find a niche. Niche, niche, niche. Um, like step one, find your passion, right? And then step two, find how that passion can relate to your specific niche. I think passion is pretty broad, niche is pretty specific. Like for me, I found my niche in college vlogging, um, photography, film, and then men's fashion and lifestyle. Like those three things can be kind of seen as my various niches, but 
you know, that's what's worked for me. And in my opinion, that's what separates the really great YouTubers from the average YouTubers. Average YouTubers, they don't understand what they want to create. They don't understand the type of audience they're looking for. And they're not cohesive with the types of content that they put out there. So my recommendations are finding a unique perspective that no one else has brought to the table and capitalizing on that honestly like the way that i grew so exponentially is that there was no ivy league youtuber there's no ivy league vlogger and i found that out and i was like hey i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna be the best in this field and no one's gonna do this better than me right now and that's what i did i've literally just been grinding for the past few months making sure that like this channel got to the point where it could be right now I hope that doesn't come off as cocky, but that's literally the mentality that I had, and obviously it's been paying off. So for whatever aspirations you have, whether it's you want to be a fashion, beauty, lifestyle guru, or you want to be the next Peter McKinnon or Casey Neistat or Justin Escalona, you know, find those inspirations and just find your niche. So this kind of leads me to my next point of, yes, it's okay to copy, but at the same time, it's not like, let me, let me explain. Um, any types of my videos that you watch, you can clearly tell that I've taken inspiration from Casey Neistat. The, the way the clips are edited, the music, you know, just the vlogging style of it overall is like very Casey Neistat-esque. And you know, what I did was I looked up to this guy so much and I took inspiration from that and then I made it work in my own way. So when I say that it's okay to copy, I mean that you can take inspiration from people you look up to, whether it's whoever it is you want, and then implement that into your own style. Obviously don't copy directly, like don't use the same fonts, don't use the same music. Like obviously no one can copy him because he's up here and we're down here. Like when you're first starting out, I think there's some level of creative exploration that beginners can have and it's okay. Like I, I've been there, everyone's been there from the start. We all copied and took inspiration from people we looked up to, but then you get to a point where you have to have the mentality of, okay, now I've gotten big enough, so I need to start making my own unique new ways of doing things. And that's kind of the point where I am right now of finding my own style, my own editing technique, my own color grades. And you know, I'm still working on it. I'm still finding it. All right, and tip number three, and this is what really, really helped me grow. And I literally saw the numbers and the statistics. And without a doubt, I can tell you that this tip right here is super valuable and pays off 100% of the time, and that is consistency. I know you hear it time and time again from any of these types of how to hit 1,000 sub videos about consistency, but it really is true. If you're posting on a daily basis, you're gonna grow exponentially within a month, I guarantee it. Or if you're posting weekly, bi-weekly, tri-weekly, whatever it is, as long as you're putting content out there for people to watch, like it's naturally gonna grow due to the fact that the algorithm will see that you're posting more videos, see that more people are watching your videos, and then put that in suggested videos of other people's channels. And then that's how you get people to go to your channel, see the content that you have, and then may or may not subscribe. That's literally how the subscription process works. And the worst thing is, if you put out this bomb ass video and people are like, man, who created this? They click on your channel and you have nothing there. You have, you know, one video made a month ago, another video three months ago. They're gonna be like, I don't wanna subscribe. Like this dude's not consistent. Like he has one or two good videos, but that's not enough for me to subscribe. Which leads me kind of to my next caveat of quality over quantity. What I mean by that is, no one's gonna subscribe if you have shitty videos. Just plain and simple. The quality has to be there first and foremost, which is why when you're starting out, it really doesn't matter how many views you're getting or how many subscribers you have. If the quality is there, the quantity will come eventually, which was a hard concept for me to grasp. But now that I'm finally here at what, like 12,000, I can wholeheartedly tell you that it will pay off. There were several, several nights where I was just so frustrated. I would put up a new video and be like, dang, like why isn't this getting any more views? Or like, why isn't my subscriber count like exponentially growing or anything like that? But the day that I started uploading consistently, and I can show you like analytics of, you know, when it peaked just from uploading daily, like over Christmas break, that's when I hit my 1000 subscriber mark. And kind of the last few points and tips is, you know, collab with other YouTubers or other creatives in your school or in your community or reach out through Instagram. I've met a bunch of models through Instagram. I've met a lot of cool people that I wouldn't have without social media. And you know, in this day and age, the internet can literally open up so many doors. So don't be afraid to just reach out, be like, hey, I'm a YouTuber, I'm a photographer, I'm a musician. We should totally do a collab together. And chances are pe other people will be down because that's other ways for them to also get noticed, whether it's through your platform or theirs. And just collaboration is a great way to make new friends and network with other people. And 
opens up a lot of doors for new opportunities. Definitely, definitely cross promote by that. You know, if you're posting on YouTube, then post it on your Instagram story. Hey, I made a new video. Check it out on my YouTube channel, link in the bio. Or tweet out a link to your latest video so that the people who follow you on Twitter can also subscribe to you on YouTube. Each social media platform has a different specific audience that you're trying to reach. And if you can cross promote to one platform of YouTube, then that's just gonna maximize your audience. <sighs> Okay, so I know that was a lot of information. Uh, I know a lot of the stuff you might have already heard before, but hopefully hearing my perspective on it and the fact that like I recently hit 1,000 subscribers can speak to the fact that like I'm not someone who's already at 100,000. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them down below. I'll try and get to them as soon as possible. And yeah, thanks for watching.